Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started working with the Environment Agency's Open LiDAR data. So the EA's LiDAR data provides high resolution elevation data covering at the moment about 60% of England, although they're hoping to expand it to 100% by 2020. Um, if you want elevation data covering other areas then please check out my previous video which goes through some of the free and open sources of elevation data that are available. If you want to get started with the EA, the Environment Agency's data, then the first thing to do is head over to environment.data.gov.uk and once that loads, click on the Surveys option. So this loads the DEFRA Survey Data Download Portal. Um, so exactly which data sets are available vary slightly by location. So I'm just going to search a tile name here, but you can search by place name or whatever you want. So I'm looking at an area on the edge of Stoke-on-Trent. Um, so once you've found the area you're interested in, there's a couple of ways to select exactly which coverage you want to download. Um, you can actually upload a shape file which outlines your study area and use that to select your area of interest. But I'm going to click on the polygon option here and just click to draw a square in this area. So by default um, the LiDAR tiles that you download are kind of cut into to sections so you won't necessarily get LiDAR just covering precisely the area you're interested in um, but it should at least cover your minimum area with probably a bit of overlap at the edges. So once you've selected your area of interest you can then click on the get available tiles button to see what data is available for your area. So that can take a second to load so just be patient and once it does then we should see we have a number of different options. So I'll start off by talking you through the product options and typically we have five options to choose from here. The LiDAR Composite, DSM and DTM the LiDAR tiles, DSM and DTM, and the LiDAR point cloud. So first of all, the difference between composite and tiles. So the composite layer should combine whatever surveys are available for this particular area to give the kind of latest coverage um, and extent. So this could actually be made up of a number of different surveys collected at different points in time in order to, to maximise the coverage. So if all you care about is getting coverage, that's great. But obviously, if you want to look at change over time or anything like that, then you need to know when your survey was taken. So in that case, you need to go to the LiDAR tiles option. And you can see here that we now have this year selector to actually pick the date. And in the case of this particular region, we actually have quite a few surveys to choose from, um, going back as far as 1999. The other thing we can see is that we have a resolution option here. So often we may, we, bleh, often we may only have one resolution available. Um, actually, in 2006, we have an option of two meter resolution or one meter resolution. Uh, but obviously, the exact coverage that's available may vary depending on which resolution you're you're looking at. A lot of areas do have one meter resolution coverage now, uh, but often two meter still does have greater greater overall coverage. So that's the difference between tiles and composite. Um, the difference between DSM and DTM. So DSM stands for digital surface model. So a digital surface model is an elevation layer that shows all the features we would see if we were looking down at the surface of the earth from the air. So it includes trees, buildings, walls, roads, all those kind of features. DTM stands for digital terrain model. And a digital terrain model is basically a bare earth elevation model. So all of those surface features like trees, hedges, buildings, walls, have been stripped away to try and leave a model that represents the, the bare ground underneath. And that's useful for a couple of applications. Firstly, if we're trying to look at kind of hydrology and flow, obviously water will flow through vegetation um, and around features. It won't be 
blocked necessarily by them. And also if we want to calculate things like heights of trees and buildings, then having the bare earth model and the surface model allows us to subtract one from the other to actually calculate those, those elevations. Um, the final one is the point cloud. So point cloud is essentially the raw data um, that is collected during the LIDAR survey. So LIDAR is a, basically a type of laser scanner. It sends out thousands of laser pulses per second, measures the amount of time they take to be reflected back from any surface that they hit. And combined with some detailed positioning data, we can use that to work out exactly where the point on the earth was that they were reflected from. So the data that's collected is essentially a, a series of, of points with x, y and z coordinates. And that's what the point cloud data includes. And actually each pulse of the laser that's sent out can actually have more than one point generated. If it's going through a tree, for example, it may have a point that's generated at the top of the tree, um, but actually several other points that are generated as it hits branches as some of the light penetrates down through the canopy. So point cloud data contains a lot of information, but also requires a lot more processing and preparation to make use of than the surface and terrain models, which have already been pre-processed for you. So I'm actually gonna cover working with point cloud data separately in another video. But unless you specifically know that you need to use the raw point cloud data, if all you need is high resolution elevation data, then I'd recommend using one of the, the surface model or terrain model options. So for this video, I'm going to use the digital surface model at one meter resolution. And I'm going to click here to download the tile. So the areas are actually split up into smaller tiles than we can see on our screen here. So at the moment, the composite DSM is only available for one quarter of this area. Um, if we had entire coverage, then we should actually have four separate tiles to, to choose from. So I'm actually gonna download the surface model and also the one meter terrain model. So just changing the options here and clicking on the download button. And they should only take a few seconds to download um, depending on the speed of your connection. They're not huge files. You can see this one's about 42 megabytes. So it's downloading reasonably quickly with my fiber optic broadband connection. So I can now show these in the folder and we can see what we've actually got are two zip files. So I'm actually going to cut these zip files and move them into a LiDAR file that I've set up. So the next thing we need to do is actually extract what's inside these zip files so that we can start working with the data in GIS. And there's a few ways to do that. If you're not familiar with zip files, you can either double click to open them, copy the files that are inside and paste them into a new folder. Um, or you can right click, do extract all, um, which will just extract all the files inside them into whatever folder you're in. But I actually use a third party program called 7-Zip, which you can download for free. You just need to Google it. Um, and that allows me if, to just right click and choose to extract them into a new folder that has the same name as the original zip file. So that's actually what I'm going to do. So extract the DSM files and do the same for the DTM files. And if I go into one of these folders, we can now see that I actually have a number of smaller files that make up the coverage of my area of interest. So these come um, in one by one kilometer tiles. So if we're interested in a larger area, the first thing that we're going to need to do to really get working with this data is to actually stitch these tiles together. So I'm now going to open up QGIS. So this is the software that I'm going to be using to prepare the LiDAR data in this video. You may have your own GIS software, in which case the process and the steps you go through should still be similar. Um, if you're not familiar with GIS, then check out my tutorial on getting started with QGIS. It's free and open source, so you can download that and get started quite easily. So the first thing I'm going to do, as I said, is to merge our smaller LiDAR tiles into one big area. So to do that, I'm going to click on the raster menu 
go to miscellaneous and then the merge option. So we can click on the browse button here and choose add files. First of all, I'm going to merge the DSM layers together. So I can shift and click to select all of those in one go. Click open and OK. And we can see up here I've got 25 files selected there. I'm going to leave all the other options as their default, except to choose save to file. I'll call this DSM merge.tiff. Click save and then click to run. So this will just take a few seconds. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I've got this warning up here about projection. Um, now, the EA LiDAR data doesn't by default have a projection defined. So if you add it into your GIS, it may well pop up with a similar warning. So what, I've, what it will do in that case, or in the case of QGIS at least, is it will assign it the default projection that your map is set to. So what I've actually done in advance is click on the bottom corner down here, and this allows us to define the projection for our map. Um, and what we want with our EA LiDAR data is to make sure our map projection is set to 27700, which is British National Grid. So make sure that's selected and click OK. Um, so sorry, I should have told you to do that before we ran the first one, if you're following along. Um, so if not, you'll just need to skip back and repeat that, that step. Um, and I've now got my merge DSM, which is not very helpfully named merge. So I'm going to right click, and rename that to DSM. Um, we can see that I've got almost complete coverage of this area. A lot of these gaps are actually water bodies. Um, and the reason for that is they have very low reflectance um, for most bands of light, to be honest. Um, so clearly the, the LiDAR sensor hasn't received enough of a, a response to actually calculate the elevation of, of those areas. So I'm going to repeat that now for the terrain model. So raster miscellaneous merge. Click here, add files. This time going into the DTM folder. Select all of them, open, OK. You can see we've got 25 files again. And this time I'm going to call this DTM merge.tiff. Save and click run. And once again, we'll just have to wait a few seconds. The warning comes up telling us that it's defaulted to British National Grid, but that's what we want, so that's fine. And close. So I can just rename this now to DTM. And there we go. We now have our Environment Agency LiDAR data downloaded, merged, and in the correct projection, ready to start working with in our GIS. And if we flip these on and off, we can clearly see the differences and how the surface model is showing buildings, trees, those kind of features, whereas our terrain model has, has stripped those out. So that's everything that I'm going to cover in this video, but check back very soon um, for next steps on what you can do now you've got your DTM and DSM ready to use in GIS.